All right, I got enough time, I think. Let's do another one. All right, I think uh, here we go. Circumcision. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Genesis 17, verse 10. If ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Galatians 5, verse 2. Okay, so, um, you know, the, the, the covenant to Abraham was a token. All right. So, let's just go, I think, do this, make it real simple. I'm going to make this short. It's rather kind of silly. This is a token of my no, that's not, that's not it. Hold on a second. Where's this? Uh, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. All right. So, and if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Well, whether you be circumcised, let's, let's see what Paul says here to make this, because this is real this is real clear cut right here, I think. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Okay. And uh, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. All right, so, um, you know, uh, the the circumcision of the foreskin is um, it, it symbolic, right? It's symbolic of cutting off the flesh, all right? So when we are born of the Spirit of God, we are a new creature, and therefore we are cutting off the old flesh, and we've become new. All right, and this will be uh, satisfied or fulfilled, if you will, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right, so this, uh, you know, again, cutting off the foreskin is symbolic of cutting off our flesh and living in the spirit of God. Of course, if you're an atheist, you don't understand nothing. All right, of course, so that's not a contradiction at all. All right, incest, uh-oh. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of this mother, Deuteronomy 27, verse 22. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, it is a wicked thing. Leviticus 20, verse 17. But what was God's reaction to Abraham who married his sister, his father's daughter? See Genesis 20, verses 11 and 12. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, I bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Genesis 17, 15 through 16. Okay, so, you know, this is uh, just not very smart, to put it nicely. Okay, so, uh, like, say, you take Abraham, let's, or, I'm sorry, let's take uh, Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve had children. Uh, who, who did their sons take to be a wife? their sister, right? So in the very beginning, uh, their children were take, you know, their sons were marrying their daughters, right? They were brother and sister. That's the only possible way to procreate, to advance human life. Um, so, uh, I mean, there's a lot of examples to give, but one common thing in all of this is that the, Genesis 20, Genesis 17, Genesis 4, 5, what have you, 
the the common thing is these things were happening before God laid down his law, before Moses gave us the law, right? So before Moses gave us the law, this was the law that, uh, or this was, this was not a law, okay? There was not that law. Um, like say when Cain went and left to be with his wife, all right? So if, the, if it was against the law then, uh, I think I heard uh, Kent Hovind one time said, well, who was going to arrest him, right? There's nobody there to arrest him. The, the fact is that uh, this was not established as a law at that point in time. Moses hadn't come yet. This is before Moses. So that law was not in place. And so, again, you know, <laughs> It's not a contradiction at all. Um, these things were happening is true. Abraham uh, married a sister and uh, so on and so forth. But the again, the law hadn't been established yet. And of course, if you don't read the Bible, you wouldn't know that. If you don't believe in God, you wouldn't understand it anyway. All right. Trust in God. A good man obtained the favor of the Lord. Proverbs 12 Verse 2. Now consider the case of Job after commissioning Satan to ruin Job financially and to slaughter his shepherd and children to win a petty bet with Satan. Is that what it was? Okay. God asked Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. All right. A good man attained favor of the Lord. So I, I'm guessing that because uh, something bad happened to somebody that believed in the Lord, uh, that God doesn't favor that person. I mean... You know, consider Job. Yeah, we'll consider Jesus. He, they killed him. Uh, they persecuted him. They cursed him. They beat him, and they killed him. So he didn't have any favor with the Lord, huh? Is that is that the argument you're trying to make there? See, this is some of these are just bad, just plain dumb. I mean, if you want to have a conversation, uh, you know, like uh, add your comments, and we can continue uh, this down this road, if you will. Uh, have this conversation why you think this is a contradiction this is in my mind so it's just silly to say that's a contradiction uh, you can't really even argue against it because it's so doggone silly but I, I certainly welcome the conversation the holy lifestyle go thy way eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine with a merry heart Ecclesiastes 9 verse 7 they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't do nothing with this one. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. They that rejoice as though they rejoiced not. So there's not enough information here. There, it, There's just nothing here. So, you know, you, you, you make a list of a thousand contradictions and you put this as one of your contradictions. Uh, I would like to have a, a, a conversation about this one right here. If you think this is a contradiction, in my opinion, there's just nothing there. And a reasonable person will look at this and say, what in the world are you talking about, right? All right we're going to have to go to the next one. Punishing crime, the son shall not bear the inequity of the father. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. All right, Exodus 20, verse 5. All right, so this, again, uh, I guess we'll, we'll take a look at this one here. Exodus, or I'm sorry, Ezekiel. 18. 
Ezekiel. Where is Ezekiel at? There it is. And I think it was verse 20. Let's see. Thou shalt. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. All right. All right. So. Uh, you know, I just don't know, again, why well, maybe I'm not very good at this. First of all, I've got to be able to identify what is the contradiction. I think you'd have to read. I, I think I'd have to sit here. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, What mean ye that ye ought? I see, now this is not going to work here. Right? Um, see, you have to explain these contradictions to me. Um, well, yet, say ye, why does not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father when the Son has not done that which is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes and have done them? He shall surely live. Alright, so... I shall not bear the inequity of the Father. I am not visiting the inequity of the Father upon the children. All right, so how do I make this a simple answer? Um, just because your father's sinned doesn't mean you're cursed. Okay, I think that's the assumption here that, well, if your father, your grandfather, whatever, if they sin, then you're cursed and there's nothing you can do about it. That's That would have to be the argument, I think, to say that this is a contradiction. Uh, you know, in Ezekiel 18, the son should not bear the inequity of the father. And just like what we read here, um, and neither shall the father bear the inequity of the son. So the, yes, the assumption has to be that, well, your father sins, so you are cursed. That's the only way in order be, to say that, well, this is a contradiction. That's the only way to look at that. And that's obviously beyond ridiculous. That's not, uh, you know, that's not what Exodus 20 Verse 5 is talking about it's not saying uh, that they're cursed. Okay, so the word visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations means uh, that it, um, it doesn't mean they're cursed at all. Um, but, uh, you know, if your father sinned, uh, whatever particular sin, that sin will be um, still looked upon or still. Uh, you know, visited, visited, that would be the right word, I think. Uh, uh, it just, and that would be a challenge for the children to overcome. I guess that's the, you know, I don't know. That's the best way I would put it. But it, certainly it's not a curse. It's not like these children are cursed if your father, if your father sinned, because if that were the case, we we're all doomed. All right, that's kind of dumb. Anyways, uh, do I got time? No, that's it. All right. Good enough.